Welcome to another episode of Junior Achievement of South Florida's Recipe for Success. Just as there are no two recipes that contain the exact same ingredients or measurements, there are no two success stories exactly the same. Recipe for Success features entrepreneurs, visionary leaders, and innovators of all ages who will share the ingredients that make them successful. Here's your host, Lori Salarulo, President and CEO of Junior Achievement of South Florida. Hey, everyone, and welcome to uh, this episode of JA's Recipe for Success, brought to you by Junior Achievement of South Florida. I'm Lori Salarulo, and I am the honored and privileged guest host of uh, this show, uh, bringing you leaders and entrepreneurs who share their ingredients to success. And so we are so enjoying hearing and learning about these recipes uh, and sharing them with our students out there who, as you probably know, we are teaching entrepreneurship, career skills, and financial literacy to uh, each day. And even as we speak virtually, we continue to educate them. So this episode's guest uh, is someone that I truly admire. Uh, Gail Birkin is the, Burks is the uh, president, CEO of CMA Enterprise which is a boutique consulting and advisory firm that specializes in performance and process improvement for business and industry. And if there was ever a time that we could use this type of advice, boy, is it today. And so with that, I want to bring on our guest, Gail. Are you there? Let's see. You know, technology. <laughs> there you are. Oh, Welcome to Recipe for Success. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love the name of the title. <laughs> well, thank you. And, you know, usually we come to, we bring the show to people from the JA World Culinary Kitchen. Uh, but since we can't be there right now, we're bringing it to everyone from my kitchen. So, um, <laughs> and there have been lots of recipes used over the last six weeks in this kitchen. Um, oh. Not so much before that. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine, I can imagine that it's so great to be here with you and thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're so welcome. So you are, I know that you are a, a huge supporter of Junior Achievement. You are one of our circle of wise women. And we yes. so appreciate your support and being a part of that instrumental group. And for those of our guests who don't know about Circle of Wise Women, it is a group of amazing, powerful, purposeful women who decided uh, probably about, I guess, probably about 10 to 12 years ago to support uh, the efforts of Junior Achievement and to advocate for the organization and raise money. And so if you've enjoyed Jay on Court, you can thank the Circle of Wise Women uh, because it was their idea. And so, Gail, I wanted to, to first just um, maybe for our audience, have you maybe touch on a couple of pivotal points in your career, right, that have brought you to the success uh, that you've achieved? Yeah, um, you know, I think that entrepreneurship has always been in my blood, even as someone in middle school, all the way high school and, and up to this point where I am right now. Um, you know, the, 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 the adrenaline that came to me when I earned my first dollar from my babysitting business, um, you know, doing odd chores. And that was my money that I earned. I kept 100% of the profit. So I was hooked at a young age in entrepreneurship. And as a result, what I did was my parents had a lot of friends who had their own businesses. And so I sought them out as mentors uh. and that for me as a young person learning about life learning about business had gotten this, this faith I, I i knew i needed to be able to and that there were no books out there to teach me about entrepreneurship and i wanted to be sure that i knew the unwritten rules of the game so i sought out people who were in it to teach me Awesome. The of the game. Yeah. Yeah. So great point. And I think that's, you know, our JA Fellows program, which is purely entrepreneurial, um, is is exactly that. It's working with mentors and starting a real business to get yeah. that real life experience. Yeah. 
and you don't have to be our age or with multiple advanced degrees that some of the most successful people in business and industry don't have college degrees um, you know mark zuckerberg left after what a year and a half of college um, you know and he now he hires people with advanced degrees you know right uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are so many examples of people. So who are doing anything. Yeah, so you many know. examples. And I think that's what's so wonderful about entrepreneurship is that any one of us can do it. Anybody can do it. If you've got a vision and you have some tenacity and self start about yourself and you understand the what I call the never give up attitude, um, there's no such thing as quit in my vocabulary, I, I, I can't even spell the word. And, and, and the other word that you have to keep is reinvent. Uh, I have uh, been in business for 30 years. I was only in corporate America for nine. So I've been an entrepreneur longer and then add on the years of young entrepreneurship growing up. So, you know, I've got almost 40, 45 years I'm, I'm kind of telling my age, but <laughs> I'm a kid at heart. I, you know, you started. You said when you were what, like nine or ten, right? I started at nine or ten. I'm a baby at heart, but you know, it, it's it's just, um, you know, people will ask you, is it really a good time to start a business? Well, when is it not a good time to start a business? And the best time is when you see that there is a need. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've. I, I give you an example. Since I was 11, I I st I sew I have sewn my own clothes and other artistic endeavors that I've taken on, and that was a muse that has never left me. She has sat on my shoulder forever, and with this pandemic that has come about, and and as you can see in the back, I've got one of my purses. I love purses. So my muse has said, it's time to be creative. It's time to serve. So becoming that social entrepreneur is something that you have to keep it up as a business, as a business person. Hold on one second, Gail. Okay. Could you keep it down? Then pick it up. Because our producer, my son Patrick is our producer. Um, always, always, inevitably during the show, will will decide he needs to talk to me about something. So you can take care of it, okay, Patrick? And then I need you just to be quiet for about, okay, pick it up, go get a tissue, and I'll sit, talk to you in about 10 minutes, okay? Yeah. All right. So that's the authenticity of doing it out of your home. Right. Right. I was like, oh, are we off? Are we off script? Are we off point? But, you know, knowing, knowing that we as entrepreneurs are here to fill a service, to fill a void that we think that nobody else has seen yet. And right. then the, the, the action part of it is making it a reality and putting it into, uh, into market so that people can experience it um, is what makes you a successful entrepreneur and not being afraid to do so. Right. And I think that that is something that um, I have enjoyed all these years. Uh, entrepreneurship really set me free, the real me free, because I can I do that right now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, there's a freedom, right? And there's also a lot of stress and things that go with that. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I read in your bio, it talks about your extensive knowledge of uh, organizational turnaround um, experience that you had. And I'm, I'm, it's interesting. I mean, you know, hopefully um, there are, I'm sure there are businesses out there who are in turnaround, but I think this is a time when maybe we need to be applying some of the strategies that you might have applied during a turnaround period. Can you share with our viewers maybe one or two things that you think are critical during a time like this for a company to be doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um the, the, the list could be as massive or as short and simple as you make it. 
And, and the first question I always ask myself, my client, uh, or my colleagues, when we have these conversations and we do is, can you control it? Are you in control of the environment? And if you're not, then looking at what are the givens? What are the givens right now? The givens in the environment, natural, uh, environmental, uh, that you that are going to be there regardless of whether the sun comes up. Or, what are the givens that we have nothing, we cannot do anything about? Um, what are some of the non-negotiables that are in place for us right now? And, and the non-negotiables are the people, places, and events that have put in, been put in place to protect us, to make sure that we stay safe and well. Right. Those are there are some non-negotiable things in place right now, which is why you and I are sitting here in our respective offices, as opposed to sitting face to face in your studio. Right. Um, what are some of the negotiables? And this is when we start getting into the action space. What are the negotiables that we can can manage? We got a 50 50 percent chance of getting what we need to manage within this situation that we're in and start looking at those proactive items and and and, and you can see what we're doing is we're starting to create and break down our can do's and, and need to wait on and then the final is what are your controllables what do you actually control i can control my creativity I can control the apps in my business, and I'm thinking right now to give you an example. I can control the apps in my business that I can download and and reach my clients, reach business and industry as I need to do so. Um, so, what do I control 100%, or or am I I'm able to manage and manipulate so that I can continue moving forward? Um, you know, when you are when you are in a turnaround mode, and unfortunately, most of us are, are now in that because of the situation we're in uh, with the pandemic, is, is to understand that instead of panicking, use this time to reinvent and reposition. How can we do that? What do we need to do? Um, what has or has not happened with our competition out there. Uh, you're, I, I'm sure you're seeing it out here. More and more people are now learning and or using the, the internet, superhighway and social media for the first time. Uh, if you're just learning it, you're a little bit behind the curve, but if you're a quick study, you're gonna pick it up. Um, so, so communication has changed and interaction has changed. Yeah. But, but continuing now the time is to seek out those resources within your organization if you have a large organization those creative juices those people that might be front line that you can pull in and converse with to to help be innovative or stay innovative in terms of reaching your customers yeah i love it so i want to make sure that i recap because i i thought there were some really good points in that and i think the two uh, high level things that I would say the two words that you touched on were reinvent and reposition, right? Absolutely. And so when you do that, you're looking at what are the givens, right? What are the non-negotiables? How to manage the, the givens and the non-negotiables? What can you control? Uh, looking at your competition and what are your resources? And it's so interesting because just this morning, we had a committee meeting, we call uh, this committee the Innovative Initiatives Committee for Junior Achievement. And that's exactly what we did was, okay, here's what's going on in the environment. Here's how we believe it's going to affect us, right? From a philanthropy revenue generating perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Here are our resources. We have a 60,000 square foot facility. We have an amazing catering kitchen. We have 50,000 students. We have 7,000 volunteers, right? These are all the resources and how can we use them to reinvent or to reposition mm -hmm. right, ourselves uh, in the marketplace. And right. so, so, so critical. And these are such, uh, such an important time to do that. And so really helpful. I love it. 
Um, and then I want it from a personal perspective, I guess. One of the things that I always love, and I know you mentioned uh, having mentors, making sure that you have your vision and that never giving up attitude, which I, I love that one. I just did a video the other day on being relentless. And I yes. used to think that was an insult, but now I take it as a compliment. No, so, <laughs> For you, those are all some of the ingredients I would imagine that have made you successful. What would you say it was, is or was your main ingredient to success? Oh gosh, um, you know, being prepared. Mm. Being prepared. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a woman of color. <laughs> I didn't notice, I just thought you had a good tan. Okay, old girl, I'm in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but you know, I, I think that, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, people get caught up on gender, ethnicity, and, and I'm not going to tell you that we don't encounter as women um, or as women of color that we don't encounter those challenges. But it is it is really all about building relationships. Mm. And I, I tell you that even when I was in corporate uh, and now as an entrepreneur, one of my keys to success in both worlds that I've lived in is the fact that I took the time to build relationships. And the second part of that was being prepared. And I, I tell you, I've always had this Grace Jones, uh, Neo, you know, this, this really abstract haircut. And even in conservative banking, I had this haircut <coughs> back in the 80s <laughs> when people weren't doing this. But I was a top producer. I, I was able to serve my clients and get results for my clients. And I was prepared. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, if, if I had to tell you there was anything in my secret sauce and, and, and be open to feedback, I, you know, I don't care how many, how deep your credentials run, uh, how, ex how many degrees, how, how much experience you've had, how many companies you have served, you have got to keep a level of humility about yourself so that you can stay open yeah. to to receiving the information that's going to continue to make you better. Um, I like to tell people that I'm an eternal student. And after nearly 30 years in business, I'm, I'm happy to say, I'm excited to say that I'm now in a mentor protege program. And my pro my mentors said to me, what can we teach you? And you know, you 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 you've been in business longer than many of us have been on this planet. I said, but you know what? You can teach me what the new generations need, want, and desire, so that I can stay in business for another thirty years and hand it off to the next generation. Exactly. So so stay open. To feedback, good, bad, or otherwise. I had a meeting, to give you an example, with my the millennials who are on my mentor team. And I said, I want you to look at my marketing material and I want you to rip it apart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my big girl britches that day because they ripped it apart. And, and I was appreciative. They were like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Miss Burks, I'm sorry. I said, no, don't be sorry, because what you have done is given me information that I now hand off to my digital consultant, and I can tell him, have at it. Right. Wow. So, so I asked for one. I got four. You I got four. I'm sorry. I, I, sometimes, I, I love overachievers. We just can't pick <laughs> one. Four amazing ingredients that I think are, are were so worthy of sharing. One was uh, being prepared. That was the one you talked about that kind of crosses over a little bit of everything. Building relationships, right? Uh, and actually, there were only three. 
And then being open to feedback, so important, right? Because we can't grow if we're not willing to hear criticism or suggestions, right, um, of doing things another way or a better way. Yeah. And so I think, you know, such valuable information in here today for companies, for individuals uh, during this time. And so I really hope that our viewers uh, take the time to listen uh, and, and think about some of the things that you've shared with us today. Um, I know I mentioned to you and I want to make sure that I invite you again and I will will talk after this to to speak with our kids, you know, maybe about those three things, um, because I think it's so helpful for them. And so we're inviting people like you and those out in our audience to come and do some speaker series with our children, with our high schools, especially because they're they're going to be entering out into the world, making some big decisions over the next couple of years. So. They're gonna need this great advice. I can't thank you enough for being a part of our organization, being a part of the Circle of Wise Women, and today for sharing some of your secrets uh, and some of your ingredients. So thank you. You're so welcome, it's an honor, it is. Well, we will talk after this, and for those of you who have joined us, thank you for watching JA's Recipe for Success, and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Take care, everyone.